Welcome to another episode of All About Code, the show for XSpace++, Clipper and Visual Fox Pro developers. My name is Nina and the name of the episode today is Testing How. In the last episode, Testing Why, I promised to tell you which kinds of software testing and testing approaches there are. Today I will fulfill that promise and explain them to you. In the part 2, we will take a look at a couple of tests written in the XBase++ language and learn how you can create and run tests with the XBase++ workbench. Let's start! Today I am going to plant flowers and I need some sand for it. Here I have sand, but it's very dirty and so <laughs> contains some insects. So I have to separate the sand from the insects. For this reason I bought a sieve. This one. And now I can pass the sand through the sieve. Oh, they are ugly. The insects have got separated out and I have clean sand for my flowers. In our case, the sand is an application, the sieve is tests, and the insects in the sieve are bugs from the application. You see, you can separate out bugs from the application with a simple sieve, also known as tests. Let's go to the types of software testing. In the diagram you can see some types of software testing performed by developers and end users. Unit testing is a kind of software testing where each unit of your code is tested to validate that it performs as designed. A unit is the smallest piece of code that can be logically isolated in an application. In XBase++, a class or a module can be considered as a unit. The goal of unit testing is to isolate each unit and verify that its behavior is correct in isolation. Integration testing is a kind of software testing where interactions between separately developed components are tested to verify that they can work together as expected. In XBase++, we test interactions between the layers of an application and integration of an application with systems that live outside of it. For example, database, file system, network or remote services. Acceptance testing. The purpose of this testing is to evaluate the application's compliance with the business requirements and verify if it meets the required criteria for delivery to end users. As you see, the first two types of testing are usually implemented by developers. Acceptance tests can be performed by developers as well as by end users. In order to write automated unit or integration tests, we can use the XPP unit framework, providing an infrastructure for agonizing test methods and verification commands for checking the test outcome matches expectations. In the next slide, I would like to discuss the testing pyramid. The biggest part of the pyramid represents unit tests. The number of unit tests should largely outnumber any type, any other type of tests. Unit tests are fast because the execution is performed in isolation and smart because they can verify the finest piece of your code. Thus, you can run them as often as you need and discover bugs. I would say unit test is a sieve with small holes for the finest bugs and the first line of defense against bugs. On the contrary, integration tests are slower because of their dependencies. For example, each established communication uh, or integration with other layers or external systems costs time. Number of these tests is smaller but still large. 
It's a sieve with large holes and big box, integration box, can be caught here easily. And acceptance tests are the smallest part of the pyramid because they test the whole application as a package and take much more time than other types of testing. These tests are the last hurdle before the application goes into production. And now I would like to talk about automated tests written by developers. First of all, uh, an automated test is a program that you can run. Second, an automated test has a specified structure consisting of four phases – setup, exercise, verify and teardown. The setup phase, before we execute code we are trying to test, we have to ensure that our subject under test is in a proper state. In other words, we set up the test environment to be able to execute our subject under test. For example, uh, assigning the instance variables to specific values or establishing connection to the database. The next is uh, exercise phase. During this phase, we execute the subject under test, usually by calling a single method. Verify phase. In this phase, we verify that the subject under test behaved as expected. This can involve comparison the returned value with the expected value, or inspecting the new state of the subject under test or any involved resources. And the last phase is Teardown. In this phase, we clean up resources allocated during the test. On the right side, you can see an executable unit test that tests the method get hello text when the input parameter CNAME is a valid string. The expected result should have a string hello plus the value of the input parameter CNAME. The test consists of three phases. And the first phase is setup phase. It creates an instance of the class under test. Here we test uh, the class test for mother. The next phase, exercise, executes the method get hello text and the input parameter is equal to low. In the verify phase, we call the verification command check string equal to compare the expected value with the returned value. If the command succeeds, the test is passed. If not, the test fails. Very easy, isn't it? In the verify phase, we can use different verification commands like check numeric value or check, string, uh, check numeric equal or check string equal. If there are some verification commands and one of them fails, the whole test fails too. The test is passed if all verification commands succeed. So, and now I would like to talk about uh, types of testing paths. Often, the subject under test has any kind of branching, if, else, case statements and so on. And it's important to cover all the logical outcomes. Also. Uh, there are negative outcomes when something unexpected happens. In the example on the right side, we have the method getPrice as text that formats a price as a string with a currency symbol. Because of the statement if, there are two logical paths that you can go through this method. Such paths are called testing paths. Possible testing paths of any code we can divide into three groups or types. So, positive testing or happy path. It's a success scenario, so to say the normal path of execution through your code. Nothing goes wrong, nothing out of the ordinary happens and we get the expected result or behavior. In the example on the right side, one of the happy paths is when the input parameter and price is greater than zero. In many cases, there are some happy paths in the same subject under test. Negative testing or dirty path. This is a wrong scenario. We need this type of testing path to ensure that our subject under test can handle invalid input or unexpected behavior. When performing negative testing, runtime errors are expected. 
In our example, there is the following dirty path when the input parameter and price is nil. Usually there are some dirty paths in the same subject under test. And the last type is boundary testing. The idea of boundary testing is to write tests that execute the boundary conditions. If we test for a range of values that are greater than n number, we have three possible conditions. Just uh, less than the number n, it's below, uh, and n itself, and then greater than number n, it's above n. In our example, the input parameter in n price should be greater than zero. For this reason, there are three boundary cases. The first one is less than the number zero, it's minus one. The next uh, testing path, the number zero itself. And the last um, boundary testing path, it's greater than number zero, it's one. So in this slide, we learn how you can go through requirements or code and define testing scenarios or paths. In the next slide, we will discuss the testing approach, test-driven development. This is my favorite topic. Sometimes the developer asks where, uh, whether it's better to write tests after the code was written or before. When I asked myself this question for the first time, the following statement convinced me. Writing tests before will minimize the amount of time between when a bug is inserted into the code and when the bug is detected and fixed. At that moment I thought, wow, I can get faster. To get faster with programming, there is a development approach or test approach, uh, test-driven development. It says that developers write tests before they write production code. And the test-driven development relies on the repetition of a very short development cycle consisting of following steps. And I'll start with the first one, it's writing a test. And then run the test and check if it fails. If not, refactor the test. The third one is writing some production code that satisfies your test. And then we run all tests. If the new test still fails, refactor the production code. And the last, uh, clean up or refactor your code. And since all tests were, were pass, passed, you can write another test and so on. It means you, as a developer, live in this cycle while programming. In this slide, I wrote some reasons to use test-driven development. And if you write tests before you code, you get less defects. Writing tests forces you to think about the requirements uh, before writing the code. It exposes requirements problems sooner because it's hard to write tests for poor requirements. And the next reason is testable. You get testable code. Writing tests before uh, we write the code forces the code to be designed for testability. We don't need to think about testability as a separate design condition. It just happens because we have written tests. And the next reason to use is faster development cycle. I mentioned it before. Writing tests before the code takes the same amount of time and effort as writing tests after the uh, code, but it shortens defect detection correction cycle. In other words, with test driven development, our development cycle becomes faster. In this slide, I prepared two pictures for you. The first one our code looks like this kitchen when we don't clean up it daily. Dirty things like dead code blocks and bugs settle down in your code and stay there forever. Our code looks like this kitchen, the second one, when we use test-driven development and step-by-step -step discover and fix defects. We don't postpone the cleaning, we do it every day. Therefore, this is your choice which kitchen you would like to have in your code, the first one or the second one.
I think it's a good time to take a coffee break. Enjoy it and see you in the part.